So who is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? And the message today is seeking God's face. Yeah, that's right. It was when, we, when you're stumped was another idea. Um, when seeking God's face, but it's also about hope. Hope in what often appears to be a hopeless world. Let's pray. Oh God, our hope, our saviour, we thank you that we can pray and we can gather and reflect on your word to us today. Help us to listen. Help us to be encouraged and help us, Lord, to rise up and work with you. We thank you for the miracle of your life that is always giving new life. Through Jesus, our saviour, we pray. Amen. I wanted to share with you something that I've been reflecting on a lot in the middle of COVID week, isolation. Um, I don't think it was just because of the COVID, but uh, it was also the opportunity to reflect. And the message is that things are dire in our planet. Things are dire. Some of you heard about the State of the Environment report that was released eventually. It was released, every five years they do a State of the Environment report on the nation where we're at and it was written December 2021 but the government didn't want to share it. There's too much bad news coming up to an election. So it was just parked. And now it's just been shared recently by the new minister, Tanya Plebisek, for the environment. And as I said, it makes terrible, terrible reading. Mass extinctions, 8% increased in the last five years. Many more that are threatened with being extinct. Can we flick through to a couple of pictures? Like, like this little guy and many, many others. Flick it through to the next one. Gang, gang, cockatoos on the endangered list very much now. These guys, did you read about them in the paper this week, in the scene on the news? The monarch, butterfly, Northern America, and, and gone all around the world. I remember we used to raise in our, at home, we used to have the little um, silkworms and watch them develop and turn into these wonderful butterflies. They were everywhere over in Northern America, amongst the red gum trees, not red gum trees, the big trees, they're endangered. Shocking to think that they could be wiped out. That was on the news this week. Let's have another look. Yeah, this was um, something else which is on the news. One of the seahorses that uh, is threatened of extinction right on our doorstep and so on. You, one of the terrible things about the State of the Environment report in the last five years, the land clearing. The awful land clearing, the knocking down of old growth forests, of trees, as big as the whole area of Tasmania in five years. Shocking. See, it's not just the loss of the oxygen, it's the loss of the environment for those little critters like I was sharing with you, the possum, etc. They've got nowhere to live. We're continuing to rape and pillage this planet. And look, and then we've got all those anecdotal signs happening all around the world, haven't we? Look, what is happening in Britain? Heat waves. 40, 41, 42, record, never had them before. Shocking heat waves, and they're not equipped to handle it like we are in Warrnambool. Well, we, we wilt, don't we, when it gets to that as well. Uh, and the floods. One in 100 year events, oh, no longer. Every year or every couple of years or every so many, it's just ridiculous. Really awful stuff. And what is it doing to us? What's it doing to our younger generation? My brother, who's not a Christian, who poo-hoos us Christians, <laughs> sent me a clip from a mo movie, and I might share this with you as well when I send an email out after this service. A clip from the movie Newsroom many years ago. And on this clip, they've got uh, one of these American TV hosts interviewing a scientist about the climate. What can we do? Nothing, says the scientist, it's too late, it's all over. 
Oh, but there must be some hope. No, it's all over. It's no, we, if we'd done it 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it would have been all right. Da, da, da. Keeps going on and on like this. And then you see clips of all these people watching this, aghast. And, of course, all the news people, because they want a good news story. They want something to promote. It just goes on in that tone. And my brother was saying, well, look, isn't this prophetic? This is predicting what was going to happen. And are we at the point of irreversible climate change? Is there any hope? This clip was saying there was no hope. That gave me the opportunity to share a couple of signs of hope, because there have been. I then flicked back to him the story of Tony Renato. Anyone heard of Tony Renato? I'll share this story with you, and that'll go on the email as well. I won't talk about um, Synod. Just as I was coming down with COVID, I was at church. I had the chills. I was at Rosebud Uniting Church. Wasn't aware that I had COVID at that stage. And we went to hear at my mum and dad's church because we were celebrating mum's 88th birthday. She invited us to church because this guy was there. Tony Renato. Now, this guy is an inspiration. I'll send you links to some of the programs that he's spoken on. He is a man of great faith, as well as being an agronomist. He's been a missionary in Niger, Niger. I uh, couldn't get the pronunciation right. West Africa. And his whole purpose for being, he's felt called by God to plant trees, to help green this planet. So he went to West Africa and he was working really, really hard. He had this strong call from God and yet it was almost total failure. For years he was planting these trees and 80% of them would die. And this is right on the edge of the Sahara and it's just desert and it is dire for each of those, for those people living there because their crops weren't, weren't good, they were subject to drought and when the drought came... All sorts of famine problems, big time. So one day, one day he was out going out to the Sahara with his trailer full of little trees and he was feeling pretty hopeless. God, he was crying out in repentance. We've muffed it up, we've stuffed it up. God, it's, we, we, change us, show us the way. He got out of his car to let the pressure down. Don't you like that? How good is this for us in prayer? Let the pressure down. Because he would get bogged if he didn't let the pressure out of the tyres on that sandy soil. So he was there letting the pressure down on his knees. And then he started to look around. For the first time, he looked around to what he'd been looking at for the last two years. But he saw it with new eyes. He saw these shrubs. Oh, what a, that's interesting. What are those shrubs? They don't look very much because they're all cut down, eaten down, chopped up. Very pathetic little things. And a bit like Moses going across to the burning bush, he felt attracted to these shrubs. He went over and had a look and as an agronomist, he could then see the leaves and with new eyes realised these weren't shrubs. These were trees. These were trees that had been knocked, about, knocked around, cut down, the farmers saw them as competition and he suddenly, the light bulb for him came on. God, this is it. This is the answer. Because he realised that these trees had a root system all underneath the soil. They didn't look much, but they had an established root system. And rather than these little trees he was planting that kept dying, this was the answer if only he could help the locals, the farmers cultivate, prune, look after these trees. So that's what happened. It was a bit of a trial. The farmers weren't convinced. They thought this is one of the mad, white, agronomist men who was just, it was just ridiculous, but they went along with him. He taught them how to prune them because uh, they'd come up with saplings and just one or two and then that would, that would grow and help. And... Then there was a drought. Now, that would be seen as a problem. But actually, the drought was a help. 
because as a world vision person, they were distributing food. So I think he made a bit of a political pro quo. If you guys look after these trees for the next year and help them, you'll get your allocation. 40% of your trees you need to look after, which is what they did. Beautiful story. Because you look, I wish I'd brought a picture of the one. The desert beforehand, hopeless. And then the greening of the place, transformed. And his point is that it's a miracle. When we work with nature rather than against nature, miracles happen. When we work with God rather than against God, miracles happen. The answer is often right there in front of us. And it's so, so simple. It's embarrassingly simple. He helped transform that and transform their lives and their crop yields increased. The ecosystem changed. The big dry winds weren't a great problem. Not only was there greenery, but the crops actually were encouraged because those roots went deep, deep, deep down and drew up the moisture. So the crops around the trees would actually improve. Hallelujah. He's from Myrtleford, by the way. Grew up in Myrtleford, Tony Renato. Check him out. Read up that stuff I send you. It's a story of hope. And I was so delighted to be able to share that in response to my brother's dire warnings of hopelessness. There is hope. If we work with God, we work with nature, miracles can still happen. I reckon that message doesn't just apply to the environment and devastation. It applies to us and our problems as well. And it applies to the church where we see so much decline and we think, oh, it's all hopeless. Death, we're just going to fade away. As we seek God's face, new opportunities emerge. That is our challenge. Those disciples in the boat, in the midst of the storm, all they could see was the storm. They were not aware of who was actually in the boat with them one more powerful than the storm that would threaten to consume them. Can we look to Jesus? And this wonderful passage that we shared earlier, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. That's inspiring, that's uplifting, that's a challenge. Can we set our minds on things above? So what am I preaching today? Am I just saying, oh, leave it all up to God, God will do it? Hope not. That's what Trump would preach. That would be what some of the right-wing fundamentalist Christians would preach. Oh, it's nothing to worry about. God's got it all in hand. Even if it's the end of the world, she'll be right. Not preaching that at all. Am I saying that it's all up to us and our responsibility, our hands? No, not saying that either. There's that way in the middle where as we work with God, as we seek God's face, miracles happen, new hope emerges. What is that wonderful other song, the old traditional, put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water, pray. Oh God, we thank you today for this message of hope. Lord, we also confront the reality of the dire situation before us, but thank you that we are not alone. Help us and guide us, encourage us in faith. Help us to seek your face. And Lord, not just us, but your whole world. And Lord, bless these offerings in our lives and that you may use us like you used Tony Renato in wonderful, powerful ways that gives new life. In Jesus and through Jesus, in the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.